Hello, uh, welcome to a barn somewhere on the Isle of Wight. So what I'm looking at today are these two objects, which are one assembly. Um, it's the front drive off a Ford 1720 tractor, which is rebadged from an Aziki. And um, what's happened to this one is the um, seal here, which you can see I've already pressed that one in, um, had gone. And here's the original one, which uh, as you can see has suffered slightly on being removed. Um, so that had to be sorted out. But first of all, I had to get it apart. So this is apart, but I'm just gonna show you how it came apart because I couldn't find any resources on it. So let's give someone something. We have a bearing on here, which uh, is over what looks like a massive crown wheel. That's just held on by an interference fit. So I got the chisel in there, drifted that up. Then after I'd done that, three arm puller over it, pulled that off. That was probably the hardest bit of the whole job because then this is just the big crown wheel that does the drive out to the flange for the wheel. That literally just pulls off. There's a bit of play in that, but I can't do anything about that without spending a lot of money. And then we've got this bearing here. Now this is quite interesting because this is held in by what looked to me to be a broken snap ring, but actually it's a two part retaining ring. So we have those two bits there. And when I actually rang up New Holland and said, I need a new snap ring, uh, the guy was like, yeah, sure, I'll order it. Ordered one and uh, somewhere around here, there's the bit, it arrived and it's one half of a snap ring. So there's nothing actually wrong with it. So that was kind of worth the eight quid just to prove that it was the right bit and it wasn't broken. So that's that. So this one, once that had been removed, that just came off the shaft. It actually came out of the casting, which is this bit here. So you can see we've got the new seal in there, nice and snugly fitted. I've got a new bearing to drop in there, but before I drop that in there, because the outer race was actually going round in the casting, I've spent quite a lot of money on Amazon to buy myself some 660 Loctite, which um, is designed to take up that little bit of play. Um, so I'm going to put the new bearing in there after I've lined that with a smear of Loctite 660 to take up the free play there. Um, once I've done that, I'll be dropping the casting over the hub and then putting the two pieces of the snap ring around it and then just gently drifting on the uh, replacement bearing. I have two replacement bearings. They're really standard bearings. One is 6307, which is there. The other one is 6209. You just need high quality non-sealed bearings to replace that. Um, and then hopefully we should be good to take it back around to the slightly stricken three wheel tractor, reassemble, get it all back together so I can get it working again. Um, and you can see that literally has a ring of bolts that holds that on the, uh, on the drop spindle on the tractor. We'll have a look at that hopefully when I take that back around there. So um, next up for me is the hub here has an awful lot of pitting on the bearing seating surface here. I'm gonna just uh, get in there with the uh, wire wheel on the grinder, clean that up so it goes on there nicely and then we can get it back together. So we'll probably come back when uh, I'm putting that back together. Okay, so that's now nice and clean. We've run the uh, cut brush around that, not the cut brush, the spread brush. Um, and then I'm going to move on to this. Um, as well as putting the 660 around this, I've got a center punch here. I'm just going to center punch a few places around here, which will cause the metal to rise out. The only reason I'm doing that is because we had the case of the bearing race, the outer race actually going around in the casting, which is what the 660 is there to do to stop it moving. Because if it continues going around there, it's just going to auger itself a much bigger hole here. Everything's going to collapse. Seal will go again. We'll wind up doing the job again with more new parts. And I want to avoid that, obviously. So, uh, right, a few center pops and a uh, bit of an application of that, get the bearing in there and then get that over the hub. Hello, okay, so what do we do? We've got the seal in, we've got this in, which has got chemical metal in it, um, and it's been popped and roughed up. And then we've got the uh, five mil half and half snap ring in there. So what we're going to do now, we've got that in and that inner race did have to be drifted in. I had to be very careful, covered it with plastic um, and then actually got this handy bit of pipe end here. So that was down over that just to, uh, to, to keep it clean and drift that down over it. Took a couple of wallops with the large block of metal over the top just to get that down really carefully. So that should be now down. So next up is... Ha, Let's make sure these snap ring halves are in, and they are. So, 
down we go and we can just check in here and we can see that that's gone down nice and tight in there which means the rings where it should be so next up we're just going to gently drift on the bearing on the top here right back at the tractor so it's uh willow seed season so there's willow seeds blooming everywhere so i've had to clean everything up so that's now cleaned up and um, so the face has been cleaned off here we appear to have a snap bolt here which i'm probably going to ignore due to a shortage of craps to give um, and we've got the reassembled bit just here all I'm going to do now that I've cleaned this up so I went around all, all here to make sure the mating faces were clean that's where the seal's going to be around that lip there not on here I could put some sealant on here but it's not actually doing any sealing this is the bit that's doing the sealing it's a machine seal so that should be just fine because this is all nice and clean and not damaged um, all I'm going to do is just lift that up bolt it in there do it up and refill it the manual specifies ford 134 um oil which seems to be a very difficult standard to actually identify uh, having spoken to a few people i think probably ep8090 i've got gl4 and 5 standard is what's going to go in here um it should be changed every 300 hours judging by the stuff that came out of it it may not have been changed at 3000 hours so uh this is probably gonna do it some good i'm probably gonna take a risk and change the oil than the other drop spindle as well and reduction gear just so that we've got the whole lot is good which will probably cause the other seal to go on the other side but um 35 year old tractor i'm reasonably happy with that um it'll be okay so i'm gonna whack this back together and uh pause for a moment we'll come back you can see what this bearing here does this actually goes inside here so the end of the shaft is supported and then the other bearings in the casing so i'm going to put it back together we'll come back part way through and uh, just talk a bit more that was reasonably easy um and there wasn't a sheared bolt um it was just crap in the uh, thread so uh, happy days um so you can see this is now back on um we have a fill plug just here which is going to be the level which we have this thumping girt bung to go in um i've also done back up the drain plug which is just down here so we're ready to go on refilling the oil Right, the hub's now been filled through the filling port here. Um, and just before I put the wheel on, I'm just gonna run through the tools you're gonna need to uh, just strip this down, um, because it is a rebadged Shibora, so although it says Ford, and so on, it's hilariously put a Powered by Cosworth sticker on here, um, it is actually a Shibora rebadged as a Ford. So we have these, which are M10s, which you're gonna need to undo to remove this whole plate assembly. These are 14 mil heads, because it's a Japanese design. We have a 19 mil headed, um, fill plug and we have a 17 mil headed uh, drain plug on here that's it for taking it off the only other thing you're going to need is a 24 mil socket um, to undo the wheel nuts and a jack to get it off the ground um, and that's about it I have to say it's a pretty simple job um, obviously you need a um, chisel to uh, drift the initial bearing out and then three arm puller to pull stuff apart but it's really not a challenging job I would uh, have no hesitation in doing it if it needed doing and the best thing you can do is probably do it when you see the leak rather than letting it run dry killing the reduction gears um, so get on it if you see yours leaking get it sorted and uh, hopefully you'll have a nice long-lived axle thanks for watching cheers <laughs>